What's up YouTube, my name is John Jackson, and if you're like me, you appreciate using a gimbal on your videos because then you get those cool cinematic compound movements. And if you're in After Effects and you wanna recreate that, you might find that the camera is a little confusing. So today I wanna show you five cinematic camera movements that you can do in After Effects that are similar to what you would get on a gimbal shot. So let's dive right in After Effects and talk about how to get those five cinematic movements for your motion graphics. All right, so the first thing you need to start with some 3D camera movements in After Effects is some 3D layers. So what do we have here? We have a composition with some scratchy foreground elements which are a little bit closer to the 3D camera. So if we turn that on and off, we can see that there. And then we have an overlay effect layer, which is just adding some optics compensation. We have a particle flare or lens flare. We have some particles. And then we have our subject, which will appear as we scrub through, and then our background. So if we switch our camera view to a custom view, we can see that if we hit C on the keyboard, we have multiple layers over multiple planes. Now we get to do the fun part. Let's create a 3D camera. So let's go back to our active camera. Control Alt Shift C on your keyboard to create a two node camera. I prefer working with two nodes. You can work with a one node camera, but I'll explain why in just a second. So we'll make a two node camera. We will drag that to the very top, go to all of our other layers. We'll hit the shy button. And then we have just our camera. Everything's still there, but we're, it's hidden so that we can just focus on the camera part. We'll hit Control Alt Shift Y on our keyboard to create a null layer, which is think of it like a a controller for certain properties in After Effects. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this Camera Controller, and then we're going to set the camera null to a 3D layer, and we're going to pick whip the camera to the camera null. Now what is that doing? Well, let's use my mouse as an example. So let's pretend my fingertips is the camera null that we just made and the mouse is the camera. So now instead of animating the camera, we can animate the camera null and we can move it, move the camera null and the camera will follow it. Or if we push forward, it's as if the null is sort of pulling the camera. Or if we go backwards, it's as if the null is pushing the camera. So you get this cool effect. Now, how do we animate this? Well, that's where the fun part happens. The first camera move is a push, pull, dolly. Just very simple forward, backwards, left or right move. To do that, we're gonna hit P on our keyboard on the camera null that will reveal the position property. We will right click on that and we will click separate dimensions. That just makes it a little bit easier for animating in the future. You don't have to do that, but little pro tip. Let's start with a camera push, pushing towards our element. So if we start at our frame one, zero, zero, Z, and then we go to the very end of our composition and we add value and you see we're getting closer and closer that seems cool and we go back to the very beginning and play it back now we're getting this cool sort of push in towards our element and you can do that with the x or y property as well so if you were to turn off those keyframes and delete them so we're back at zero zero let's go to the x position let's start it maybe about 200 pixels to the left, go to the very end of the composition, about 200 pixels to the right or so. And if we just play that back, we'll see we got this cool looking left to right movement. And since we have three aspects in our 3D scene, we have a background, a subject, and then a foreground, we're getting this cool parallax effect as well. So that first camera movement is just a simple dolly push pull left or right. The second camera movement that we're gonna do is sort of a diagonal dolly or pan or whatever you wanna call it. But what we need to do is change the orientation of our 
camera controller. So what that basically is saying is we have our camera controller, fingertips, and the mouse, and we're basically rotating the orientation of the null and the camera's gonna follow it. So then you get this changing perspective and then you can animate that null similarly to the way we did it last time. So to do that, let's go into our rotation properties on our camera controller here. You can just reveal those by hitting R on your keyboard and you'll see X, Y, and Z rotation. We will set this to a positive or negative value. If we set it to a positive value, it will sort of tilt downwards. If we set it to a negative value, it will sort of tilt upwards. It, it, you get this change in perspective. So if we scrub through, we can see that that subject is changing its perspective spot. So we can adjust that how we want, put that wherever. And sometimes you might notice when you change the perspective is that background that you have might not be large enough. So you can just go into your background layer and just increase the size of that. And right now it's already pretty big. And we'll just put that back in the Z space. All right, so now we can go back to our camera controller, hit P on the keyboard to reveal those position properties. Let's go to frame zero, move these keyframes back, and then over there, about 300 pixels. And then we'll go to the very end of our composition and we'll move it forward about 300 pixels. And then you get this cool diagonal sort of perspective change for your camera. Pretty cool, right? All right? Let's move on to number three. All right, so number three is a sort of pan effect. And what that's doing is instead of rotating the camera null, we're gonna rotate the camera. So we got our example here. We have our camera null, and that's gonna stay the same. We're gonna animate the null, but we're also gonna animate the camera to change its orientation with the camera null as well. And that's why we set up the camera null, and I like using two node cameras. So let's first go into our properties or our, our camera and our null, we'll hit R on the keyboard. We don't need to worry about the camera controller, but just reveal that anyway. So make sure it's at zero, zero. We're gonna set the orientation or the rotation of that camera to, let's see. Ah, about that, that's fine. Negative or positive 11.7. Put a keyframe on that and we'll jump to the very end there. And then we'll set that to, so let's say like negative three, negative five, sure. And then what we'll see is the camera is now gonna be panning across. And this is where you get some really cool effects because now you can add compound movements. Because the camera is attached to that camera null, what we can do is move the null and have it not affect the camera and vice versa with the rotation. So what do I mean by that? Let's hit P in our keyboard with our camera controller selected. Separate those dimensions. Let's go to the X property. Let's move it and let's say to like about 2000. And then let's go to the very end of our composition and set it to maybe about like, what, 1500? And then let's go back and play that back. And you get this really cool looking effect where the camera's panning, but you also have this camera moving as well. So very cinematic, so to speak. And this is something you could easily get on a gimbal, but then figuring out in After Effects is a little bit more challenging because there's math or numbers involved but this is how you do it. Move that camera null and move that camera rotation or orientation. All right, the fourth cinematic camera move to do in After Effects is a camera roll. And basically it's just rolling the camera as another camera animation occurs, either the position or another rotation, other cool things. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a position keyframe on the null and let's bring it into negative space, pulling it away from our subject. So we can just pull that back and we can see that our foreground layer is getting further away from the camera, our flare is getting further away and our background is getting further away. If we go to the very end now, we can bring it back to zero, zero, play that back and we're getting this push just like in part one. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna animate the Z rotation on that camera. So to do that, we're going to click on zero, zero, times zero, zero, and then set the Z rotation to like negative 25, 
maybe 20 right there, just so we don't get the background cut off in that corner. We'll jump to the very end of our composition, set that to like positive 10. These numbers don't matter. Whatever you think looks cool is gonna work for your composition. Now, if we jump back to part or frame zero, play that back, get this cool rolling camera effect, which I love doing on a gimbal. And now you can do it in After Effects as well. All right, last one, let's jump right to it. All right, that last camera movement we're gonna talk about in Adobe After Effects is the orbit. And basically what that means is just having our camera orbit around our subject. So the first thing you need to make sure happens is that your subject and your camera null are in the exact same position in Z space. So what do I mean by that? Let's jump to our custom view. So this drop down menu right here, we're going to go to custom view one. And if we scrub through, we can see our subject. And if we reveal our layers really quick, we can see our subject right here. This guy is right there. And if we reveal those positions, 1920 by 1080 by zero. That means it is that in that position in Z space. And if we go to our camera controller, it's in that same position here. If we reveal those position properties, same thing. So that's very important. Second, now we can start animating the rotation and orientation of our camera null. So how do we do that? Let's hide these layers, hit R on our keyboard. Let's jump back to our active camera and go to frame zero. Let's change the rotation property. We don't really see what's happening yet because we're not looking at the subject because it's right there. And now if we just adjust this a little bit more and maybe scale up that background by a lot. Now we got this cool perspective and we could add a camera moving by changing the position if we wanted to, but we're gonna do the orientation first and that's how we're gonna get the orbit. So we're gonna change this second value right here that around and we'll see if we change that second value, we're getting this cool orbit effect. So maybe if we jump to say like 64 and move that keyframe to the very end, and then we go to keyframe zero and you get this cool looking parallax effect with the overlay and the particles and the flare and the subject in the background. I think this looks really, really cool because it just adds a little bit more depth and dimension with the other layers happening in 2.5D space. So I hope you learned something with these five cinematic camera movements in After Effects. If you learned something, let me know. If you didn't and you, and you have questions, let me know. I'd be more than happy to help you out in the comment section down below. And until next time, my name is John Jagsney and I hope to see you beautiful people in that next video. But if not, no worries. I still appreciate you. And yeah, that was supposed to be a hug, not like arms crossed, but yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy your week and bye. Lens cap over here. Bye. Put the place up.